Come on, give him the praise and the glory. He's worthy every day with Jesus is sweeter than the day before. Hallelujah. And it's not just talk. For those who experience that life, they know it's their testimony. And we don't want to just have talk. Hallelujah. Because many have that and lack the corresponding actions. And James said those kind of people, their faith is dead. Come on. Their faith is what? Dead because they say one thing, but their lifestyle is saying another. Come on. They, they say they believe, yet still there's not corresponding action to what they believe. Huh? And James says faith without works is what? Dead. As the body is dead without the spirit. So faith without works is dead. It cannot do anything and it surely will not please God. Hallelujah. The word of God said it in Hebrews chapter 3 in the latter verses. He says that the people did not make it in because of unbelief. Unbelief produces disobedience. Unbelief in God produces obedience for one to say i believe in him but i don't obey him it makes their testimony a lie it makes their testimony what a lie because your belief must match with your conduct come on now your belief must what match with your conduct if the belief does not match with the conduct that belief is vain Huh? Come on now. Now the people who are called Hebrews by the language that identify them as the people, more so-called Jews, are the Israelites. They, in fact, were called God's covenant people. But they didn't behave like God's covenant people. They behaved like those who were not God's covenant people. Come on now. Now when a man cuts a covenant, as my nephew cut covenant such you know. when a man cut covenant with his bride he's saying now I remember they said in the vows forsaking all others I take this man to be my lawfully wedded husband and the wife and the husband also said forsaking all others I take this woman to be my lawfully wedded wife it speaks of a bond and a commitment that must exist between the both of them that is not between others. Come on now. But this was not so with Israel. So where they bear the covenant with God. The mark that they had of circumcision. Was pretty much as a testimony. The circumcision in the male was as a testimony. As a ring you know. Because it left a mark as a ring on the man's heart. So it says it was there to mark as a testimony not just to mark something in his flesh but to say it is placed at that part of the flesh to say it must be close to the heart because any man you put anything sharp there so you will know say close to your heart but if they made they made a culture of it they made a tradition of it rather than use it as a means of worship to God as God's covenant people. They then saw it as just a medical procedure that was done to them to keep them from contracting diseases. Keeping them sanctified in the camp. But the Lord didn't order circumcision just to keep your body clean. It was an order from early as with Abraham to say he's in covenant with these people. He's in what? And so a mark was placed on their flesh to say that they are in covenant with him just as when a man and a woman is being married, there's a ring that is used as an item to say this is the token, the emblem that signifies that they have joined this union and bond with each other. Come on now. But if they just wear it just as a jewelry, it won't stop what happened afterwards. Not true. 
Same way, if the man just wear the circumcision as just a medical procedure that just keep his clean and don't remember, it's a sign of covenant with God, then he will not be devoted to God. And that's what happened with Israel. They became like the other nation, running after other gods which were not really gods. Come on. And so they kept putting idols before God. The first and greatest commandment the Lord gave them was that he told them they should have no other gods before him. Similar to the marital vows of saying that you take this one above all else. Come on. And he says the same way saying that they received that word. The Lord says, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt. That's Exodus 20 verse 2. Right. I am the God that brought you out of the land of Egypt. And out of the house of bondage. He said, I brought you out of something. But I brought you into something. I didn't just bring you out. But I'm bringing you into something new. And what is the first command he said to them? You shall have no other gods before me. You shall have what? No other gods before me. This was something common to the other nations. They had many gods. But when you're in marriage, you can't have many spouse. It speaks of an exclusive relationship. And that's why it says God was calling this union between him and man. And calling Abraham as one he would call as a man who would aid his family and raise his children in a godly way. And then God from the, the man's family raised up a nation that came through him, through Jacob. And they call it 12 tribes of Israel with the 12 sons and their tribes formed a nation now. And now a whole nation was called after the name that God gave to a man, Israel. Come on now. That was Jacob whose name was changed to Israel. Huh? So we see then God's purpose behind giving them this mark of circumcision was for them to have this exclusive relationship with him as his people and knowing that he is their God. Their one true God. But this, of course, they did not remain in. They strayed from this of envying the nations around them and through covetousness and envy of what they had or what they did they sought to also engage in their evil practices come on and of course God led them into nations and into countries where he told them to drive the people out of that nation out of that land because God wanted them to live differently in the land that others who saw who, who they drove out would see them living in that land how God wanted people to live in the land but instead they went in there and did the same things and even worse than those who God used them to drive out the land that's why God allowed other wicked nations to come and drive them out of the land he gave to them because they would not devote that loyalty to God. It is still happening today. Many are still just idolaters. They, they are bound with idolatry. The Lord says, I've taken you out of the land of bondage. The land of what? Bond. I've taken you out of that land of bondage but I didn't take you out of bondage for you to just wander around and say I'm free I take you out to give you your own land and that you should live in that land the way the Lord wants you to live there that others can see and know you are my people come on now but they didn't do it that way did they not at all you see, the same command is what the Lord is saying to us. What he said to Israel there through Moses at the time was their leader. Was the same word the Lord was saying even to Abraham when he called him. He says, come out from amongst them and be separate. He brought him out to give him a land. 
but also for him to live in a different way from the people he was living amongst that were an idolatrous people. Come on. And the Lord wanted him to have that exclusivity of relationship with him. But of course, many keep coveting what the world is doing and keep running after the world. And the word of God says the whole world is under the sway of Satan. The devil has it under its sway. And so those who run down the world will find themselves in the hand of Satan. Him molding and shaping and moving them into different activities and practices that degrade their life and their worth and their purpose. And we are saying this is not the will of God. You need to know God as a will for your life. Come on. And if you believe God has a will for your life and you said he is your God, it is your, it is on you to take the time to find it out. Come on. It's for you to take it to heart if you say you really believe and step out and know what is this will God have for my life. And don't sit back and just say, que sera, sera. whatever will be, will be. And call that faith. Faith is not F A T E. It's not faith, it's not chance of things happening. Faith is based on obedience and trust in God and His Word. So if you're not trusting in God or His Word, how do you then have faith? Faith is more than just saying, I got determination. And whatever I determine to do, I get it done. So that means I got faith. That's not faith according to the Bible. The word of God declares and specifies what is faith. Come on, somebody. So it's not by you just being determined. Because the word of God says that in the days of Nimrod, the people were determined. They were of one language, of one speech. They came together and he says, whatsoever they purpose to do, they would do. And nothing would be impossible for them. Being of one language and under one ruler, Nimrod and purpose to build this tower that would go up into the skies. And said they would build this as a name to themselves. A monument to their achievement and to their wise work and power to give glory to themselves. And the Lord would not have it. Come on. So if that was faith, the Lord would say yes. See, they are determined to do what they are doing. Let us see them do it because it pleased me to see their faith. But the word of God said God was not pleased with what they were determined to do. And he said if he had allowed them, they would have done it. Because he said it would be possible for them to do it. But he stopped them in their tracks from doing it. Come on now. Huh? That's in Genesis 11. Yes, verse 5 to 7 says, But the Lord came down. The Lord what? Came down to see the city and the tower which the sons of men had built. And the Lord said what? Indeed the people are all one. And they are all one language. And this is what they begin to do. Huh? Now nothing he says that they purpose to do will be withheld from them. Was that faith? No. Because if it was faith, it would please God that they were doing whatever they will to do, they did it. But the word of God says, what did God say? Come, let us go down and there confuse their language that they may not understand one another's speech. In other words, he stopped them in their track from doing what they were doing. Come on. He says, so the Lord scattered them abroad from the air over the face of all the earth. And they ceased building the city. For therefore it was named, it was called what? Babel or Babel. Every people would say, you hear people talking and they say, you can't make much sense of what they're saying. They say they are babbling. And no doubt why this was called Babel. You know that there's a, there's an app called Babel now to teach you languages. You can download it on your phone and it teach you any language in a few weeks. I see them advertising it on, on the cable. 
you know, says, but this was the name called to it because the Lord divided them by their languages. He what? Divided them by their language. So that word confused was to divide because everybody there did not understand anything that was said. They understood each other, but not all of who spoke. So who understood each other went together as a group and who understand others went the other way. And that's all they were scattered in different groups by different languages. Come on now. So he divided them through their language. For one sister was asking me that question is, since God is not the author of confusion, how he confused them there, so then how he can start the confusion there. And I said, no, he divided them by their language. He divided them. So that's what he did when he says confused the language. Come on, come on. Because because of the different language they spoke, they then divided into different groups and were scattered over the face of the earth. Re realize that? That's in verse 8 and verse 9 of Genesis 11. It says, so the Lord scattered them. See, that scattered is the word he's using. Divided them abroad from there over the face of the all the earth. And they seized they cease building the city. The building stopped right there. Never went no further. So that, that building structure they were putting up was not something to give glory to God, nor something that was pleasing to God. It was something they were doing to bring honor and glory to themselves and to the works of their hands. And they knew that one day they should separate because God commanded them to go abroad and to multiply and increase and cover the earth. But they wanted to stay in that one place to do this thing that God said he had not authorized them to do. Come on. You can read it earlier in the chapter in verse 3. He says they said to one another, come let us make bricks and bake them thoroughly. And they had big bricks for stone and they had asphalt for Malta. Then they said, come let us build ourselves a city. And that tower whose top is in the heavens. Let us make a name for ourselves. It's not for the Lord. Let us make a name for ourselves. Lest we be scattered abroad over the face of the earth. So they know they should go in different areas of the earth to populate the earth. But they were staying there to build a monument unto themselves being there. And the Lord said, uh-uh. He would not have this. This was not something placed in their heart by the Lord. This was something placed in their heart by the devil. Because there is a time when the Lord will bring all people up from all nations declaring to the Lord in one tongue and the one king and ruler in one city. And that is what the John speaks of speaking of. The new Jerusalem. That he said will come down and be placed in this earth. And he says there only the righteous will live. And they will go into the city praising the Lord. From one Sabbath to the next nations are coming praising him. God intend that glory to be for him. Not for man to build a city for himself to get glory for himself. To ourselves. Not so. So though they were determined to do that. And the Lord says, by their determination, they would still accomplish it had he not stepped in. Because he says, what they deem to do, it would be possible. Come on. Yet still he says, this is not a faith. I'm using this scripture to show and to teach somebody this morning that mere determination is not faith. You can be stubborn and determined to do things and get along in doing it but that don't mean because you're stubborn and do it you got faith that's why you do it come on you remember also what the word of god says i use that scripture to show it there with nimrod and i show another scripture with what david said i believe it in psalm 37 david said fret not yourself because of what because of who evil doers why he says for they shall soon be cut down like grass and wither as green herb. Huh? They shall what? 
No, no. If you notice early in verse one, it says, "Fret not, sir, because of evildoers, nor be envious." Why would anyone be envious of the workers of iniquity? He says, because they seem to prosper in their way. They seem to what? In that they, because they are prospering what they are doing, people think, say, yes, I want, it's that you have to do to get it, so I go and do it too. I go and do it too. Because you see how they quickly spring up. Ah. See how they left from none to who are leaving off there. Every man. They got it. And people become envious of them and start to mimic their ways, start to follow their counsel of how they got what they got. Say, Oh, I see you do it. And they gonna go do it too. Come on now. But the Lord is saying, Don't be envious of their ways. Why? For they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. So, what did he tell you to do? trust in the lord and what do good and what dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness come on give me more verses there holly said delight yourself he says also in the lord delight means to be excited be ecstatic about serving him he says he shall give you what the desires of your heart god said he will do that he didn't say because you're determined you will get it because many determine and get it but what happened to them after they get it he said they are soon cut off they end in shame come on somebody but he says commit your way to the lord trust also in him and what will he do he shall bring it to pass he shall bring forth your righteousness as the light and your justice as the known day come on somebody so the writer the psalmist told us you don't envy the workers of iniquity why because god have a cut down there for them hello and many still following that crowd because broad is the road that leads to destruction and many there are that find it but narrow is the road that leads to life and few they are that find it and we are encouraging you to be a part of the few come on somebody and not to follow the crowd by what they are gaining and what they are doing to get their unrighteous gain the Lord is saying no this is what you ought to do seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you the lord told his disciples that the gentiles speaking of the unbelievers and ungodly at the time because he was first bringing the gospel to the jews and so he says the, after these things he says the gentiles seek but he says for your father your heavenly father knows that you need all these things but what he tell you this is what, what, what you must do first seek first the kingdom of god his rulership and leadership in your life huh and what and his righteousness what he deems right for you and what he deems right for you to do not what you think in your eyes is right and what you feel is the best option that you want to make the world is living that way but he said to his disciples no you put the kingdom of god first you consider god's rule and governance over your life and what he deems right and all those things will be added unto you he will lead you into all righteousness and all the benefits that he has for you in christ jesus eh? hallelujah so the word of God says we should not fret because of what the evil people do, evil doers do, and prosper in it. Come on. Because he said when you do such things, you will be cut off with them. Come on now. Huh? Praise God. Hallelujah. So we know faith 
is more than just mere determination. Huh? Faith is obedience to the word of God. When the word of God describes faith in Hebrews 11, let's take a look at that account, how faith is described. Faith is described as obedience to God's word. Look at this, it says, Now faith is the substance of things what? Hope for. The evidence of things not seen. He says, for by it, by it what? By it faith, the elders obtain what? They obtain a good report. By faith also, he says, we understand. So faith, he says, is the substance of of things we hope for and is the evidence of things not seen and is it by that faith elders obtain good report a good testimony and also by faith in verse 3 says we understand how the world came into being we weren't there in the initial state of the world coming into being so what, what, who we had to trust to know it was coming to be the way it did the word of God and God watch it because if God didn't tell us how would we know right so he says by faith we understand so it's trusting and obeying his word we come to understand that the worlds were framed what framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen huh, were not made of things which are visible come on and he says, by faith, also is by faith, Abel offered to God what? A more excellent sacrifice than Cain. Both Cain and Abel offer sacrifice to God. Why then did God reject Cain and Abel and Cain's sacrifice and accepted Abel and Abel's sacrifice? Why? Right? The lifestyle, their faith had to do with their lifestyle. You come that, you check it out and see that it said that in 1 John 3, as 1 John 3 verse 12, 1 John 3 verse 12 tells us plainly why his was rejected and why Abel's was accepted. He says in verse 11 to 12, for this is the message that you heard from the beginning that we should what? love one another not as Cain who was of the wicked one he said who was Cain of the wicked one who is the wicked one the devil he said he murdered his brother brother that come from same mother same father and why did he murder him he murdered him because his works were evil and his brother's works was what righteous faith produce the lifestyle get it so we cannot say we have faith and don't have the lifestyle that the faith brings it's a lie you'll be deceiving yourself to think that come on somebody got it so we are looking in the chronicles of the word and looking how the word declares there in hebrews 11 what faith is he says Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain that's in verse 4 of Hebrews 11 so can someone offer a more excellent sacrifice to God than another yes because there it is he says faith cause you to offer a more excellent sacrifice than one who is offering without that faith and faith is not the determination just to do it. It is about the lifestyle that you have with God as a result of that faith. Watch this. So it says, Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, through which he obtained what? Witness that he was righteous. There it is. He obtained what? Witness that he, Abel, was righteous. And God testifying of his gifts. God what? Testifying of his gifts. Me say, God's approval over his gifts. Confirmed that he was. Got it? 
He says, God testifying of his gifts, and through it, he being dead, still speak. He being dead, still speak. Come on, somebody. I mean, not even the death of his body can stop him to stop speaking to God, and God still hearing him. Now, why you like about that one? So that's the faith we're talking about. This faith don't stop when anybody dies. <laughs> Come on. He says, he being dead still speaks. For God said, I heard Abel's blood cried out to me. What have you done to your brother? Come on. And he was lying, but he didn't know where his brother was. He knew where he was. The same place where he killed him. Come on. So he was lying. Hello. Even to God he's lying. Come on. Are you saying he's not of the wicked one? When you live in a certain manner, you believe God's going to hear like those who are living in obedience to him? You're going fooling yourself. He says, now Cain, look at Genesis 4. Huh. Genesis 4 verse 8 says, now Cain talked with Abel his brother. And it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and killed him. And the Lord said to Cain, Where is Abel, your brother? He said, I do not know. Am I my brother's keeper? You hear that? And he said, What? The Lord said to him, What have you done? The voice, the what? The voice of your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. And say, the Lord still hear him speaking even after his body is dead. Come on now. Faith make me understand that. Come on, somebody. Huh? So it says that, that, that that's this verse that confirms in Hebrews 11. Verse 4, Hebrews 11 verse 4 says, By faith Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, through which he obtained what? Witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and through it, he being dead, still speaks. He being dead. When Moses, did Moses die? Yes, he did die. And didn't Peter, James, and John see Moses and Elijah speaking to Jesus on the Mount of Transfiguration? Didn't his body die already? But he stand up speaking to Jesus. Come on, somebody. You need to know the word. Faith make you understand these things. Faith in the word of God, not in your own imagination and thought. But in the written and declared word. Come on, somebody. Huh? Think of that scripture is in Matthew chapter 17. Huh? Reading from verse 1, it says, After six days, Jesus took Peter, James, and John, his brother, led them up on a high mountain by themselves. And he was what? Transfigured before them. And his face sh shone. Like the sun, the brightness of the glory coming from his face was like the sun. And his clothes became as white as the light. And behold Moses, and behold who? Moses and Elijah appeared to them, talking with him. They're talking to him with him. Isn't he hearing them? Of course. Come on. So though their bodies were dead, because Moses had died in a physical body, Elijah also died because Jesus said his spirit was in John. John was that Elijah said. And he said they did to him just as they did. They chose of their own doing, so they beheaded him. He stays stopped dead through John. Come on now. He says, this is also a testament here that he's saying that though the body dies, the spirit doesn't die when the body dies. 
the spirit is still alive and Jesus made that clear too in Luke chapter 16 regarding the rich man and the poor man both died suffered physical death their bodies died and were buried but their spirit man was very much still alive and in a different place of environment than they were before and Jesus spoke about that huh? in Luke chapter 16 hallelujah come on give me earlier up yes praise God Luke chapter 16 from verse 19 it says there was a certain rich man and this is Jesus speaking and we know he cannot lie and if he said there was a certain rich man speaking of it in the past tense in his days this happened before he came before he was speaking this to them and he says there was a certain rich man who was clothed in purple and fine linen feared sumptuously man the man was decked and living heavily huh I said man the man the man got it man you say eh -eh. but there was a certain beggar named Lazarus full of sores was laid at his gate designed to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table moreover the dogs came and licked his sores so it was the beggar died the beggar who that is Lazarus died and was carried by angels to Abraham's bosom the rich man also died and was buried <laughs> you know the angel carry him you know, rest in peace both of you died everybody died rest in peace everybody everybody was there they say rest in peace but it's not so you're not getting no peace if you're not in the Lord watch this he says and being in torment that, that happened to the, that man being in torment in Hades he lifted up his eyes and saw Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom then he cried and said father Abraham have mercy on me uh, you hear the cry send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue for I am tormented in this flame are you saying now is he still feeling <laughs> the body is dead but he's still feeling feeling heat feeling thirst come on now feeling tormented and the body is dead but the spirit man is still alive he says then he cried out to him to tell Lazarus to do but what did Abraham say to him Abraham said son remember that in your lifetime that is your lifetime in your physical body but he's still having lifetime now at a place he don't want to be and that's what Abraham is talking to him about Abraham said son remember that in your lifetime you receive your good things and likewise Lazarus receive what evil things in other words some some terrible things happen to Lazarus while some great things was happening to you come on but what he said but now Lazarus he is comforted and you are tormented come on now besides all this he says there between us and you there's a great gulf fix so that those who want to pass from here to you cannot nor can those from there pass to us a great gulf is fixed between that none can cross over but you can stay away there and see it and we can stay away there and see you and hear you too how you like that so I hear they say no man you don't see it when people are dead nobody will ever come back and tell you what happened after I did when you're dead it was dead here is Jesus 
the son of God who is God that was with God in the beginning that made all things and through him all things were made that were made telling you what happened after physical death come on if you believe in him you believe in his message you can't say I believe him but I don't believe that message come on somebody because believing the teacher includes believing his teachings come on somebody you got it so he said when he heard that there was no way for Lazarus to step across to cool her he is the torment he was feeling in the flames and he couldn't by no way come and relieve himself nor would any relief reach him there then he's asking for relief for his brothers left in the physical body watch this that's in verse 27 of luke chapter 16. he said then he said i beg you therefore father huh i beg you therefore father that you would send him to my father's house for i have five brothers i have how much five brothers that he may testify to them lest they also come to this place of torment come on so he's saying send lazarus back from the grave to warn them and what did abraham say yes we're going to send lazarus no he says they have moses and the prophets they have the preacher and they have the written words because Moses is a prophet so he's not saying prophet and prophets he's saying they have Moses talking about the written word that was there that was ascribed to Moses being the writer of it right so he said they have Moses and the prophets and the prophets were the preachers of the written word got it so he says let them hear them but he knew from how he was living he wasn't hearing them that's why he ended up there and he knew though he had died left them there they would not hear the preachers neither so he said to them no father Abraham but if one goes to them from the dead they repent if one goes to them from the dead they will repent come on we have the record that one come from the dead over two thousand years now died and rose again the third day that is not very long after and seen walking up and down in the land 40 days after resurrection that testimony is still here and they still don't believe and they still don't repent Come on that will not save them he said if they don't hear the preacher now the written word they won't hear nothing else no one else will have anything else to say other than what the written word is stated and what the preacher is declaring from the written word because god is not speaking against the preachers nor is he speaking against his written word come on somebody he says but he said to him huh if they do not hear moses and the prophets neither will they be persuaded though one rise from the dead and so it was to him then and so it is to us now if they don't believe the word the written word and the preachers of the written word neither will he be persuaded even if one rise from the dead and tell them say there is life after death they will still not repent because they are set in their ways to live how they want to live in sin come on faith produces obedience come on somebody what does faith do it produces obedience 
Where there's no obedience to the word of God, there is no faith. Come on, somebody. Somebody need to get that today. Hello. Obedience to God's word produces good works. Produces what? Good works. And what it calls good fruit is carrying corresponding actions to what was said. That means you are applying and complying with the given instruction. Huh? And God doesn't speak to give suggestion. When God speaks his words, they are commands. He's not giving you a suggestion to say, well, maybe you could have do it like this. He's commanding you to do it like this. And he says, those who truly love him, they keep his commandments. Come on now. If they don't keep it, how can they say they truly love and obey him? Come on, somebody. Jesus said it to his disciples in John 14, verse 15. If you love me, keep my commandments. What did he say? If you love me, he says, if you love me, don't just tell me, say you love me. Obey my word. He says, that's how you prove your love. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Because many say, I love the Lord while you're still walking in disobedience. And that is not true. Hello. You can't say, I love the Lord while you're still doing what his enemy wants you to do. You are still opposing him by following the father or lord of sin, which is Satan. To commit sin is doing works of the devil. The works of the devil is sin. Hello, somebody. And it is written all over scriptures. Hello. He says, he that sins is of the devil. Come on now, you check this. 1 John 3, verse 7 to verse 9. 1 John 3, verse 7 to verse 9 says, Little children, let no one deceive you. Let no what? Let no one deceive you. He who practices righteousness is righteous. Is not he who believes that he's righteous? Is he who practices it? Because many said they believe and not practicing it. He who practices righteousness is righteous just as he is righteous. He who sins is of the devil. For the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested that he might what? Destroy the works of the devil. What is the works of the devil? Sin. Come on. He says, whoever has been born of God does not sin. Yeah, man, there's my favorite verse. Hallelujah. Whoever has been born of God does not sin. For his seed remains in him. His seed, God's seed, remains in him. And if Christ remains in him, can he sin? No, he says, and he cannot sin because he has been born of God. That's 1 John 3 verse 9. Come on somebody. And I'll tell you that verse could lock down on a lot of churches. Because they're still practicing sin while they're saying, I'm born of God. I'm born again, but I still sin. That's not what the scripture says. You must not water down the scripture to suit your lifestyle you must adjust your lifestyle to suit the scriptures scriptures given for all admonition and all teaching and training and correction and rebuke and reproof come on somebody say it's not given for you as just a suggestion it's a command come on somebody second timothy 3 
verse 16 to 17 says all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine that's teachings for reproof for correction for instruction in righteousness that the man of God may be complete thoroughly equipped for what for every good work come on somebody true faith produces obedience if we say we have faith but we are disobedient to God we are lying come on because faith the word of God says by faith Noah built an ark God commanded Noah to build an ark to save him and his family because he's bringing a flood over the whole earth did Noah build the ark then Noah obeyed God so that's why he says by faith he did it faith produces what obedience come on hallelujah and we know that if we have faith huh? if we have faith it must produce obedience in our lives praise God hallelujah hallelujah come on now so we know that faith brings us to a place of obedience those who still remain in disobedience lack faith and even Paul said it not all men have faith not all men why because they reject the word of God huh because what they reject the word of God and faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God and that hearing comes with corresponding actions which produce obedience huh? so what if Noah had not built that ark huh? if Noah had not built that ark then he would perish both he and his family it would not be a story of faith for him because faith produces what obedience corresponding actions hallelujah come on hallelujah so it said in hebrews 11 verse 7 by faith noah being divinely warned noah what being divinely warned of things not yet seen moved with godly fear that's the obedience moved with godly fear prepared an ark for the saving of his household by which he condemned the world and became what here of the righteousness which is according to what faith righteousness comes by faith because obedience to the word produces that righteousness that's why he says he that practice righteousness is righteous it's not he that believe you can believe in a lie believing it doesn't make it true come on so you got to understand it is practicing righteousness that produces righteousness hallelujah it's not merely believing glory to God so Abraham didn't just believe <laughs> he practiced what was right it's the very cause why the Lord chose him huh? because the Lord saw something in him that was not much that not common amongst men that this man still loved God loved the word of God love righteousness love to please God come on somebody huh hallelujah so we know that this was the very reason why God chose him huh because he says he was a righteous man he's a what a who? hallelujah 
So the Lord said it in verse 5 to verse 8 of Genesis chapter 6. He says, Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And the Lord was sorry that he had made man on the earth, and he was grieved in his heart. So the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, creeping thing and birds of the air. For I am sorry to have made them. But Noah, there's a but. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. How do you find grace in the eyes of the Lord? Through faith. That's right. Which produces obedience. It's the very reason why God favored Abel's sacrifice and despised Cain's sacrifice. The word says he had respect for Cain's, for Abel and Abel's sacrifice, but had no respect for Cain nor Cain's sacrifice. Come on. So he didn't just didn't respect Cain's sacrifice, but he had no respect for Cain. That's Genesis 4. Verse 4 and 5, he says, Abel also brought of the firstborn of his flock and of their fat. The Lord respected Abel. There it is. The Lord respected Abel and his offering. But he did not respect Cain and his offering. See? He said, no man, God love everybody, respect everybody, honor everybody, bless everybody. Not so. Learn what the word of God is telling you. He says, but he did not respect Cain and his offering. And Cain was very angry because of that and his countenance fell. Cain did not bring that anger against God that had no respect for him nor for his offering. He brought that anger against the one God had the respect for and his offering. That's why he killed Abel. See? It's the very same reason why the ungodly despise the godly to this day. Come on, somebody. They can't rise up and kill God, but they want to kill the godly. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Cain, of course, was warned about this by God. What did God say to Cain? Verse 6 to verse 7 of Genesis 4. The Lord said to Cain, Why are you angry? In other words, he's saying, Take some thought about this. What are you really angry about? Why has your countenance fallen? Hear what the Lord said? If you do well, Will you not be accepted? Come on. If you do well, will you not be accepted? Not just your offering, but you be accepted. Come on. They said, no, God don't reject anybody. They don't know what the word said. They're thinking about their mind. It's not imagination to this thing. What is the word saying? He said, the Lord said to Cain, if you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not well, what happened? Sin lies at the door. And its desire is for you. In other words, sin won't take you over. Its desire is for you. But what the Lord said to him, but you should rule over it. Rule over sin. Come on, somebody. Don't tell me say you can't rule over it. You're a liar. Rule over it. That's what the Lord said to Cain. And Cain talked with Abel. 
his brother and things, everything's quit and done and all right. And later he still killed him. Come on. He did not rule over that sinful nature in him. He gave way to it. Hello, somebody. And that's why John, in his writing, in his letter, called Cain the one of the wicked one. Cain, he says, was of the wicked one. That's First John 3, verse 12. He says, Cain who was of the wicked one. Means that he's of the devil. He said that's why he murdered his brother. His brother didn't murder him. The one who did right did not kill the one who did wrong. It's the one who did wrong that rose up to kill the one who did right. You think it changed? Huh? Our same nature still operating because it's the same devil. It's not a different devil. From way back there with Cain and Abel till now, the same devil is here. Using people to sin, to do things against each other and against God. And God is saying the same thing to you, like he said to Cain. Sin desires to have its rule over you. But you should have mastery, rule over it. Come on. It desires to take you over. But as the writer Paul says, don't be overcome with evil. But overcome evil with good. And there is no good without God. So you cannot overcome sin without him. And many say they are with him. Yes, we have him. But we still fall in prey to sin. That's a lie. Because he told you already. The, there is no darkness in him. So if you're still falling, I pray to it. He says you are in that darkness. That darkness got a control over you. It's at your door. And it seeks to have mastery over you. To take you over. But he says you should have mastery over it. Hallelujah. What did the Lord say? If you do well, will you not be accepted? Come on. So why your countenance drop? Why are you angry? You know what to do. Repent. That's what he's telling him. Repent. But did he repent? No, he did not. He went on further to commit a worse sin. Killing of his own brother. Come on. And then when confronted about it by God, he's lying to cover it up. And the judgment follows. Because he truly did not. Repent. Come on, somebody. We know that faith produces obedience. Come on. Hallelujah. James wants the believers to know that faith must produce what? Obedience. Look at James 1, verse 19 to 27. James 1, verse 19 to 27. Praise God. Hallelujah. James said, so then, my beloved brethren, let every man be what? Swift to hear and slow to speak. Slow to wrath. Slow to wrath. Not quick to cut off each other's head. Why? He says in verse 20, for the wrath of man does not produce the righteousness of God. You're hearing that? The wrath of man what? Does not produce 
the righteousness of God. So what he tell you to do? Therefore lay aside all filthiness huh? and overflow of wickedness and receive with meekness the what? The implanted word of God which is able to save your souls. Come on, somebody. Huh? But be doers of the word. What did he say must do? He said, don't just say, I believe the word and don't do it. You will only be deceiving yourself. Because anyone truly believe it will do it. God gives them the power to do it. Faith unleashes the power of God. Come on. He says, but be doers of the word and not hearers only. Deceiving yourselves. See that? For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he's like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. For he observes himself. He sees his condition. But goes away immediately and forgets what kind of man he was. Continue just the same, eh? Leopard don't change their spots. Come on now. He says, but he who looks into the perfect law of liberty, that's into the word, huh? And continues in it. It is, it is not a forgetful era, but a what? A doer of the work. Come on. A what? A doer of the work. This one will be blessed in what he does. Come on now. If anyone among you think he's religious and does not bridle his tongue, he says, but deceive his own heart. This one's religion is useless. Come on. Chatty, chatty, what no have no substance behind it. Hear lab out. Huh? Because they talk a lot about the Lord, but they don't live according to his word. Hello? He says, pure and undefiled religion before God and the Father is this. What is it? To visit orphans and widows in their trouble. But here is the key part. To keep oneself unspotted from the world. Now I can tell you, none of your religion can do that. But Jesus can. To keep you unspotted from the world. Huh? So if you say you got faith, James is saying, man, come on, show me the works. Hallelujah. Because faith without works is dead. Come on. It's not merely talk. One woman even wrote a song and said, action, not a bag of mouth. Come on. Because it's not just talk. People don't want to just get their promises and smooth talking. They want to see the substance of what you're declaring. And he says, faith is the substance of things hoped for. Without that substance, it's just empty hope. Wishful thinking. And wishful thinking is not faith. Faith carries corresponding action. That's why it says it is the evidence of things not seen. He didn't say it is the things not seen. He said it is the evidence of the things that are not seen. Faith is that evidence. Come on. We go to the court and we are providing evidence because we were not there to see and to hear what happened. They put you on the witness stand to gather evidence from you. You, by giving your record of what happened there, is providing evidence to what happened that we were not there to see. 
and it must collaborate with what things we already gather because if it is contrary to the evidence already gathered then we know your testimony is false I recall your false witness huh? now the Lord is not raising up false witnesses he's raising up true witnesses no, sir. and true witnesses carry a true testimony it cannot be that you say I'm saved from sin but I'm still sinning that's not a true testimony come on come on somebody you know if you're talking to a drug addict and they say I've been delivered of drugs but I'm still using it you tell them no you're not delivered yet you want to be delivered but until you stop using that drug you're not delivered you're still an addict come on God is not keeping us as no addicts to sin so that's why he sent Jesus Jesus is the cure to that addiction because he's putting his spirit within us that it so the answer is in him come on somebody now if any man say I found the answer but still laying down in the problem something wrong something wrong Mr. Chin wang 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 come on because if you found the answer you are not supposed to still be laying in the problem it should be corrected and if it is corrected you can't be corrected and you're still wrong when you're corrected now it must be right that's where they get the word righteousness that's all because it is corrected so jesus didn't come just to show us righteousness but we can't have it only him alone can have it but we here following him but only him alone righteous nothing like that because scripture itself says lot is a righteous man scripture itself says abraham is a righteous man isaac is a righteous man human being and righteous come on so don't tell me that lie about no one righteous but jesus because he came here to seek and to save that which was lost and if it's still in sin it is lost got it so he didn't come to save you in sin he come to save you from your sin huh jesus said it <laughs> oh my god that was when he went to zacchaeus house he said to zacchaeus who was a tax collector that was robbing the people and when jesus went to dine with him words jesus shared with him and the testimony that he got he got up and spoke to jesus and said man all that i have received today huh all that i've received all that i've taken from people falsely i'm going to restore them fourfold that's in luke 19 verse 8 to verse 10 it says zacchaeus stood and said to the lord 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 i give half of my goods to the poor this is what zacchaeus determined to do it's not something he was doing it's something he said to the lord he's gonna do now because he knew he got some things through some unrighteous gain through people making life fat or white but knew that now the lord was convicting him about this lifestyle he had and he said i give half of my goods to the poor 
And if I have taken anything from anyone by false accusation, I restore fourfold. What did Jesus say to him? No, Zacchaeus, don't do that. You have a good heart. No, the Lord said to him, Today, salvation has come to this house because he also, which is Zacchaeus, is a son of Abraham. Means he's going into Abraham's bosom. Come on, somebody. For the Son of Man, he says, has come to what? Seek and to save that which was lost. If Zacchaeus continued the same way he did before, he could not be saved. Repentance is a requirement for salvation. All those that tell you, say, you just tell the Lord sorry and you are right. They have lied to you. Because saying sorry is not repentance. It is what you do in response to your regret that makes it repentance. Come on. It's not just being sorry. It's changing course from that course of action to what is pleasing and right in the sight of God. Come on, somebody. Paul says this to the Corinthians who were called, where they, well, they were called as saints, but their lifestyle wasn't matching as they were called. That's so, all. And Paul then said to the saints in Corinth, 2 Corinthians 7, 2 Corinthians 7, verse 9 to 10. He says, I rejoice not that you were made sorry. In other words, it's not sorry we want. We don't rejoice for you just to say sorry. Come on. It's not sorry we're after. He said, but that your sorrow, your what? Your sorrow led to repentance. Your sorrow is not repentance. Your sorrow must lead to repentance. You get it? Watch that. He said, we, we were not happy rejoicing about you being made sorry. But that your sorrow led to repentance. For you were made sorry in a godly manner. There's a godly manner in that way it was done. He says that they might suffer no loss. Now the way Paul ministered to them was to invite them into this grace, not to push them away from it. But it had the requirement of repentance. Got it? We don't say, it's all right, no matter where you just come. No, we tell you, stop doing that and come. We don't say, no matter what. No, because we're not condoning your actions. Come on. We are not condemning you, but we are not condoning your actions. Got it? He says, for godly sorrow produces what? Repentance. It's not merely just to say sorry, but it's what it must produce. That is what will be leading to salvation. Look what it says. Godly sorrow produces what? Repentance leading to salvation. So it's that repentance that leads you to true salvation. It's not the sorry that leads you to it. Come on. And it says that repentance that leads to salvation must not be regretted. Huh? But the sorrow of the world, what does it do? When they get sorry, say they ain't going to hear you. Like the young man out here, ain't going to hear me. He's sorry if he hear me. <laughs> he can get up and say, no, me not hear no more of this. He can go on. That sorrow, the sorrow of the world produces death. When you tell them they are guilty of sin, and that guilt brings condemnation 
and destruction, you they say you condemn them and they don't want to hear nothing more. Because they don't want to meet the requirement. Repentance. They won't get salvation in sin. Blessing in sin. Long life in a sin. Long health in a sin. Great success in a sin. And say, aha, see your God good? If that was the case, Jesus Christ wouldn't have to come here and die. Come on. That sin got to stop. The practice must end. Not slow down. Not become irregular. It must end. Come on. Did you know that scripture declared the end of the law is Christ? Have you considered what that statement means? That the end of the law is Christ. Come on somebody. Don't you understand all those under the law are sinners? All those under the law still practicing? So he says Christ is the end of that. It's not the continuation of that. It's the end. Come on, somebody. Huh? My God, my God, my God. Because righteousness is what God is looking for. Sin is not righteous. Come on. Come on, somebody. Now, you trying to be righteous in sin will never be righteous. But Christ, who saved you from your sin, is saying, now that I declare you righteous, work as those who are righteous. Practice righteousness. Come on, somebody. Huh? Paul said it in Romans 10. Romans 10 verse 3 and 4 says, For they being ignorant of God's righteousness. Being what? Ignorant of God's Not man's righteousness. God's righteousness. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness. Seeking to establish their own righteousness. Have not submitted to the righteousness of God. They are still trying to be righteous by their own self-effort. Rather than understanding that spirit of God was given to you for you to experience the life, the holiness, the righteousness of God in your life. And he says they have not embraced that. That's why they continue to sin. Come on. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone who believes. And remember I tell you, believing without corresponding action is useless. Faith without works is dead. Come on somebody. What is the sense of God calling you? Saints, when you live like a devil. God is not a liar. He says those who are saints must live as fitting and as becoming saints. Come on somebody. So if he know you couldn't do it, why would he tell you? He's telling you. That you can because I have given to you my word and my spirit. And I'm watching over my word to bring it to pass. And my spirit is there to empower you to do it. 
So it says, you have to resist the spirit and resist the word to sin. Why would you think by resisting the word and resist, resisting the Holy Spirit, you're still going to be saved? That's a lie. The devil said that to Eve. You can eat of the tree and still live. It's a lie from the beginning and it's still a lie now. Telling people they can sin and still live the life. It's a lie. The Lord said we must resist and abstain from all things that are evil. Even the very appearance of it. My God in heaven. So why would you then dive in it? He says abstain from every form of evil. That's First Thessalonians 5 verse 22. Hmm. Abstain from every form of evil. Test all things. Hold fast to what is good. And abstain from every form of evil. Can it be done? That's why he gave you his spirit. Of yourself you cannot do it. But you cannot say his spirit dwell in me. And I still cannot. That's a lie. He says if the spirit of God dwell in you. You are empowered to do it. Come on. Hello. Come on. He said in Ephesians 1 verse 13 and 14. In him you also trusted after you what? You heard the word of truth. The gospel of your salvation. In whom also having believed you were what? You were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Who is what? That Holy Spirit of promise is the guarantee of our inheritance until what? The redemption of the purchased property to what? The praise of his glory. He says and that Holy Spirit is given to us until the time this body is changed. My God. From mortal to immortality. So he said he gave you that seal to keep the product that is within. To keep the testimony. Huh? Hallelujah. And if you lost the testimony then. How can you say you got the seal? The seal have to be broken. For the product to be contaminated. So he said you had to resist the word. And you had to resist the Holy Spirit. For that contamination to take place. And that was not easy. Because the Holy Spirit put a lot of roadblocks in your way as for you not to commit sin. You know that. You know that even sinners are restrained from certain sin. Even sinners are restrained from sin by the Holy Spirit. The word of God says Abimelech took Abraham's wife and did not know it was his wife because both Abraham and his wife told him that their brothers and sisters which they were by being married to each other from different fathers but from same mother or from same mother different fathers right but they married to persons who were closely related to them because of their faith. So they're really like what we'd call half sisters or half brothers. So when he said that they still believe that that was a case that they were just brothers and sisters then and they were, had no further relationship. But Abimelech had that woman's wife amongst the women that he took to have sexual pleasure with. Yet still, look what the word of God said in Genesis 20, 
regarding Abimelech. Huh? He says, where it is? Verse 2. Verse 1. 2. He says, now Abraham said of Sarah's wife, she is my sister. And Abimelech, king of Gerar, sent and took Sarah. But God came to Abimelech in a dream by night and said to him, Indeed, you are a dead man. Hear what God said to the sinner man? Indeed, you are a dead man because of the woman whom you have taken, for she is a man's wife. Come on. But Abimelech had not come near her. And he said, Lord, will you slay a righteous nation also? Now we are going to destroy the whole nation. Because of this, what did the Lord say? Huh? Because he said to the Lord, did he not say to me, she's my sister? And even she herself said, he's my brother. And in the integrity of my heart and in the sense of my hands, I have done this. That's what the sinner man say. In an integrity and heart, sinner man have integrity. Because even cinnamon can say certain things. Me not go do you know. Me saying you know. Not true. But he says certain things me not go do. So he's saying in the integrity of his heart he's saying then if I knew she was someone's husband I would not take her. You get it? So even he as a cinnamon can say in the integrity of my heart and innocence of my hands I done this. If me know, we won't do it. Not true. He's saying then this was done out of what? Ignorance. Not true. God said to him in a dream, Yes, I know. Did God say no? God said yes. God said yes, I know that you did this in the integrity of your heart. In other words, you did this not knowing say it was a man's wife. You see how God treat him different now? Watch what the Lord says. For I also withheld you. What the Lord saying though? I also withheld you from sinning against me. Therefore I did not let you touch her. I did not let you touch her. So he wanted to touch her. And there are other maids there that he would touch. But he went to the others and never came to her. And the Lord said, it is I that kept you from touching her till me come tell you this. So you see if you touch her now. Watch it now. You're getting it? So what the Lord tell him say, now restore the man's wife. Why? He said, Abraham is a prophet. There it is in verse 7 of Genesis 20. He says, for Abraham, he's a prophet and he will pray for you. He said, you can pray for yourself, yes or no? You need somebody to pray for you. Huh? He will pray for you and you shall what? Live. But if you do not restore her, know that you shall surely die. You and all who are yours. You are what? All who are yours. So Abimelech rose up early in the morning, called all his servants, told all the things in their hearing, and the men were very much afraid. Come on. And Abimelech called Abraham and said to him, What have you done to us? Have I offended you that you brought on me and my kingdom a great sin? You have done deeds to me. That ought not to be done. Then Abimelech said to Abraham, What did you have in view that you have done this thing? In other words, what were you thinking of? Huh? And what did Abraham say? Because I thought surely the fear of God is not in this place. Come on. So Abraham was seeing some things, hearing some things, making no sense. You go down there so with your pretty wife, you don't come back with her. Eh? 
<laughs> he said, because surely the fear of God is not in this place. And they will kill me on account of my wife. But indeed, she's truly my sister. She's the daughter of my father. There it is. But not the daughter of my mother. And she became my wife. And it came to pass when God caused me to wander from my mother's house that I said to her, this is your kindness that you should do for me. In every place where we go, say of me is my brother. In other words, to secure him from being attacked or killed. The Abimelech took what? Took sheep, oxen, male and female servants and gave them to Abraham. He restored Sarah, his wife, to him. And Abimelech said, See, my land is before you. Dwell where it pleases you. And to Sarah he said, Behold, I have given your brother <laughs> a thousand pieces of silver. Indeed, this vindicates you before all who are with you and before everybody. Thus she was rebuked. Come on. Because he's paying her the full wages of a prostitute being with him. And say, Yet still me not get nothing from you, but here it is. Any time and discomfort. Come on. So she was rebuked by that. Because she knew nothing never happened. Hello. So Abraham prayed to God. And what did God do? God healed Abimelech, his wife. Abimelech had a wife, you know. <laughs> yes, man. Selene take woman. <laughs> Abimelech, his wife, and his female servants. And then what? Then they bore children. Why was that? For the Lord had closed up all the wombs of the house of Abimelech because of Sarah, Abraham's wife. All the wombs them lock up a man can have one see. God locked it down because he have the prophet's wife. Come on now. You need to understand this thing. You think say, God write this thing for fairy tale and bedtime story. He, he have this thing written for you to learn to be admonished about righteousness. No, so. Hello. Because if you don't love righteousness, you're not going to love this. You're not going to love yourself. Hello. Because of righteousness we preach, you know. What you say? And God expects for you to live it. Hello. Faith produces obedience. It produces good works. No, sir. Hallelujah. It is good works that pleases God. Huh? How can he say, well done, good and faithful, if he wasn't doing nothing good and he wasn't faithful? Come on. He has to know that you are already practicing what you should be doing. I'm just saying, Lord, forgive me, I'm a sinner. That is not good work. Hallelujah. You need to understand what you do after that. That is the work. What you do after that? Come on. Because repentance is what leads to what? Salvation. Praise God. Praise God. So God wants us to practice good works. What do you say? God wants us to what? <laughs> oh God Almighty. Now Paul said it in Ephesians 2 verse 10. For we are his masterpiece. His workmanship, his creation. Created in Christ Jesus. For what? For good works. Which God prepared or ordained ahead of time. That we should walk in them. That we should what? Walk in. So I say, this is what the Lord called you to do. Come on. And everywhere Jesus went, he was doing good. No, sir. You're not doing good sometime and the other time them. He's not doing good, but you know he's a human being. That's how he go. Because nobody's not perfect. Those talks is for wimps. 
and mediocre worshiper. But God is calling for true worshipers. And you cannot be a true worshiper practicing sin. Because all those who practice sins are idolaters. And no idolater have any part in the kingdom of God. Come on somebody. Because they have chosen to put other things above the worth and value of God. And the first and greatest command the Lord have is that you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your strength, with all your soul, with all your mind. Come on. He said if you love him like that, you have time to love and to be carried away by idols. Come on. Would you be partaking in sin if you love the Lord with all your heart? Come on, somebody. So he says, you need to embrace the truth. Because only truth huh, can set you free. All such practices, all those who practice sin are heading to one place of destruction. And we are saying to you, make your election sure that you are not in that list are that line up for destruction but on the narrow road that leads to life and life eternal what do you say come on so faith must produce what obedience come on hebrews 11 verse 8 says abram obeyed abram what by faith abram obeyed when he was called to go out to the place which he would receive as an inheritance. He went out not knowing where he was going. By faith he dwelt in land of promise as, a, as in a foreign country. Dwelling in tents with Isaac and Jacob. The ears with him of the same promise. For he waited for what? He waited for the city which has foundations whose builder and maker is God. Come on. By faith, even Sarah herself also received strength. She received what? Strength to conceive seed. And she bore a child when she was past the age. Because what? She judged him faithful who had made the promise. Therefore, from one man, and him as good as dead, even born as many as the stars of the sky in multitude. Innumerable in the, as the sun, innumerable as the sun which is by the seashore. Huh? These all died in faith. What they died in? Faith not having received the promise, but having seen them afar off were assured of them and embraced them and confessed that they were what strangers and pilgrims on the earth for those who say such things huh declare plainly that they are what they seek a homeland come on truly if they had called to mind Praise God. Truly if they had called to mind that country from which they had come out, they would have had opportunity to return. But now they desire what? A better that is a heavenly country. Therefore God is not ashamed to be called their God. For he has prepared a city for them. Huh? So now that city, Abraham believed to see. Come on, somebody. He says, by faith, Abraham, when he was tested, offer up Isaac. And he who had received the promise, offered up his only begotten son, of whom it was said in Isaac, your seed shall be called. Concluding that God was able to what? 
God was able to raise him up even from the dead from which he also received him in a figurative sense. You know, he believed that though God commanded him to kill this child, God would raise him up back to fulfill the promise God made to him that in him the seed would be in Isaac. So if Isaac died, how would that seed come? So he believed though he would kill him, God would raise him up. Huh? And he says this happened in a figurative sense in that when he raised that knife, he considered Isaac dead already. But the Lord says, no, don't do any harm to the boy. Because I see you will not be told anything from me. Come on. It was his obedience that is the proof of his faith. Come on. Without obedience, faith is dead. Come on, somebody. Inactive, dormant, useless. Come on. He says, by faith, Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau. By faith, J Jacob and Esau were blessed by Isaac concerning things to come. And by faith, Jacob, when he was dying, also blessed each of his sons, sons of Joseph and worship, leaning on the top of his staff. By faith, Joseph, when he was dying, made mention of the departure of the children of Israel and gave instruction concerning his bones, that he must leave his bones in Egypt, but take it to the land that God promised to his father and bury it there. So Joseph even knew that Israel would not remain in Egypt. So even when they remained there and Joseph died and then this Pharaoh came and put them in slavery for over 400 years, Joseph already prophesied by faith that they would leave. Because he says, when you leave, take my bones. He didn't say, if you leave. He says, when? Come on. He says, faith gave him Faith gave him that confidence to do that. Amen. So he says, by faith, Moses, huh? when he was born, was hidden three months by his parents. Because what? They saw he was a beautiful child and they were not afraid of the king's command. Come on. This wasn't just mere determination. They sense in their spirit a special calling on this child's life. And there was indeed a special calling on that child's life. Come on. And though they had threats being given of anyone who was sparing son and what they would do to them, they still hid him against the king's command. Huh? And they did this by what? Faith, trusting in the word of God. Huh? Is that same word? Mary's uh, Moses' mother, as his babysitter, whispered in his ear that he could know that the people out there that were being called slaves were actually the people of God. And the ones that were saying they were masters were actually ungodly people who didn't have covenant with God, uncircumcised, they would call it. Come on. He says, Now they, that was how Moses was inspired in his heart to make a decision between choosing whether to be part with the Israelites or with the Egyptians. But the word of God said, by faith, Moses refused to be called a child, a son of Pharaoh's daughter. Come on. That's verse 24. By faith, Moses, when he became of age, refused to be called son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy what? The passing pleasures of sin, esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt. For he looked to the reward. See, the faith brought obedience to God's word. If we say we have faith and we still disobey God's word, that's not faith. I'm talking to you today. I wanted to get this in your spirit and run with the word and change the report. Amen. 
Praise God. He says, by faith, he forsook Egypt. He what? He forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king. For he endured as seen him who is invisible. Who was he seen who was invisible? That's Christ. By faith, he kept the pass over and he sprinkled up blood. Lest he who destroyed the firstborn should touch them. Come on, it's the word that was given to him. And obeying the word that brought that. Faith produces obedience. By faith they passed through the Red Sea as by dry land. Whereas the Egyptians attempting to do so were drowned. The, the Egyptians were trying to do it out of determination to say, them cross it, we can cross it too. It was not so. Determination by itself is not faith. There was a word given to them that they obeyed from the Lord that guaranteed their safe passage across the Red Sea. There was no such word given to the Egyptians. Come on. So persons can use determination to do things and call it faith. But that is not faith. Hello. He says by faith. Huh? By faith the walls of Jericho fell down after they were encircled for seven days. Come on. How could walls that is thick that they said two chariots could ride side by side on the wall. Not beside the wall. On the wall. That is showing the thickness of the wall. And it go right around the city. How can people walk around it and it fall down? See? It is obedience to the word that brought that result. That's why it says, by faith the walls of Jericho fell. After they encircled for seven days. They were commanded to encircle it for seven days and they did. And that's why it says, by faith it was done. Got it? Faith produces obedience. By faith the harlot Rahab did not perish with those who did not believe. When she had received the spies with peace. Huh? Come on now. She received them. She knew that they came about the destruction of her city. But she protected them because she said, The Lord is with them. And God really gave the city over into their hands. So she's choosing to stand with them rather than with her own countrymen. She made a choice to stand with those of faith than to stand with those who are ungodly. Come on, somebody. Obedience to the word. Huh? Faith produces what? Obedience to the word. Long as it doesn't produce obedience, you haven't found true faith. And we want you to find true faith. Hello? By you hearing and hearing the word of God. Huh? And he says, how can they hear without a preacher? How can there be a preacher if there is not one sent? Come on. So he says, faith is being declared to you through the word. And your hearing is being released through the power of the word. But your heart is released through your obedience to the word. Your heart is what? Released through your obedience to the word. Until you are obedient to the word. Your heart will still be in resistance. And you will still fail from carrying out its instructions. You got that? Come on, give God the praise in here. So we want you to embrace the word. The word produces fruit. And fruit that remains. Come on. God has prepared ahead of time good works in Christ. That we should walk in them. Huh? That we should live in them and become lifetime practices, what we call lifestyle. Huh? In doing so, his fullness is revealed in us. As Christ is the full expression of the Godhead, 
Even so, we must be as his beloved children, full expression of him. Got it? Come on. He says, as the Father, he says, as I have fed on the Father, I live because of the Father, and I feed on him, I do what pleases him. He says, so you will live if you feed on me and do as I command. Come on. Hello, somebody. That's John 6, verse 57. John 6, verse 57. As the, father, as the living Father sent me and I live because of the Father. He says, so he who feeds on me will live because of me. You can't feed on him and still end up in sin. The devil is a liar. You got to understand the life he's releasing to you is the same life the Father has released in him. And it's called eternal life. It's not just living long. It's holy. It's righteous. It's pure. Hello, somebody. It's the nature of Christ. What do you call it? Spirit of Christ, which is used synonymously with the Spirit of God. As Paul said it in Romans 8, verse 9. He says, You are not in the flesh. But in the spirit, if indeed what? The spirit of God dwells in you. And he said, no, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he's none of his notice is using the spirit of God synonymously with dwelling in you as the spirit of Christ. The spirit of God dwells in you. If anyone don't have the spirit of Christ, it's none of it because the spirit of God must dwell in you. The spirit of God is the spirit of Christ. The spirit of Christ is the spirit of God. And he says, if he dwells in you, then you are not weak and become a victim to the desire, sinful desires of your flesh. Come on, somebody. So I said in verse 10. Praise God. Hallelujah. He says, if Christ is in you, there it is. The body is dead because of sin. Dead is not going to participate in anything that is sinful. But the spirit is life because of what? Righteousness. That will be the practice. Because of who is dwelling in you. But you can't say he's dwelling in me. But I'm still sinning. That goes against God and that goes against the truth. He says, anyone who says such thing, the truth is not in them. They, do, they lie and do not practice the truth. Come on. Huh? They lie and do not practice. So that's why we want you to be those who don't just talk about the truth, but practice the truth. Come on. For you will know the truth. And the truth will what? Set you free. Come on. And, God, and the Lord says, what is impossible for man is possible with God. And if you believe that, then you can truly experience the life God has for you. You believe it? Come on, stand with me. We're going to pray. Time to release you. Praise God. Hallelujah. Lift those hands to Jesus. Hallelujah. We got to believe. But in believing, it must convert into corresponding actions. Cannot be just that we believe. Because James said it that even demons believe and tremble that there is a God. But they still behave as demons. They still practice evil. We don't want to be like that. It's not just believing. We must live it. Are you in this? Come on, somebody give the praise to God. Hallelujah. They say this mountain can't be moved. Come on. 
They say this chains will never break. Hallelujah. But they don't know you like we do. There is power in your name. So much power in your name. They say this mountain can't be moved. Hallelujah. But they don't know you like we do. There is power in your name. So much power in your name. Move the unmovable. Shake the unbreakable. God, we believe. Come on. God, we believe for it from the impossible. We'll see a miracle. God, we believe. God, we believe for it. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. We heard that hope is no way through. Uh, we heard the tide will never change. Hey, come on. They haven't seen what you can do. There is power in your name. Uh, there is power in your name. Hey, hey. Move the unmovable, break the unbreakable. God, we believe. Come on, God, we believe. For it from the impossible, we'll see a miracle. God, we believe. God, we believe. For it. Hallelujah. Come on, praise him in here. Yeah. We know that hope is never lost. Yeah. For there is still an empty grave. God, we believe no matter what. There is power in your name. Hey. So much power in your name. Hey, move the unmovable, break the unbreakable. God, we believe. God, we believe for it. We'll be possible. We'll see a miracle. God, we believe. Come on, move the unmovable. Come on. God, we believe, you believe, hey, hey. from the impossible, we'll see a miracle, God, we believe, God, we believe for it, oh yeah, we believe, yes, God. You said it, come on, I believe it, you said it, it is done, come on, believe it, you, I believe it, you said it, it is done, you said, you said, hey, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe, you said it, it is done, you said, I know you did it, God, you promised me the word, whatever you say, you're going to do it, I can hold you to it, you said, you said, I, I believe, I believe, you 
Somebody worship him. Don't let the devil convince you otherwise. When the devil no, says no, Jesus still say yes. Hey, you said, you said it. And I believe it, God. You're God of your word. Keep it. You keep your word, and I gotta keep it. Yeah, Hallelujah! Somebody believe in your heart today. Confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe in your heart. God raised Him from the dead. Then, if God raised Him from the dead, can He do that for you? Can these dry bones live? Can you praise Him? In spite of all you've been through, in spite of all the devil's done, you got a right to stand up and serve the Lord with all your heart. Serve Him with all your might. Serve Him with all your strength. And declare you said it. Oh yeah, I believe it. Oh Lord, you said it, it is done. I know, I know, I know you said it. Hey, I believe it. I know you keep your word. And I'm going over. I'm going over. I believe, I believe. I believe, I believe. said it God cannot lie whatever he calls you to do he's gonna empower you to do it stop doubting the Lord 
Stop leaning on your own understanding. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. He won't let you fall. He will hold you. Even in your weakness, his strength is made perfect. Come on, somebody. Now I don't care what the devil is trying. We got victory in the Lord. We got hope in the Lord. We got salvation in the Lord. We got deliverance in the Lord. We got provision in the Lord. You don't have to leave the Lord for anything. Everything you need is in Him. Come on, somebody. Surrender it all to Him right now. He said, cast all your cares upon me. And learn of me. You're troubled about a lot of things. God is saying, here I am. Uh, lean on me. And I will give you. I will keep you. Hallelujah. Through the storm and the rain. Through the hurt and the pain. You will rise again and declare. Look what the Lord has done come on somebody praise him. yeah 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 mm. thank you Jesus thank you Jesus come on lay it all down for him whatever it takes whatever it takes oh God I want to be in your will I want to please you still With everything I said and do Be glorified in me Oh God, oh God oh, oh, oh. Yes God Thank you, Jesus. Do as you will, God. To lead. You can't do this of yourself. Jesus said to his disciples, Without me, you can do nothing. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you abide in me and my word abide in you, you will bring forth fruit and much fruit. And fruit that remains. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody, lift those hands and worship me. What a joy divine Leaning on The everlasting hopes What a blessedness what a peace is mine Leaning on The everlasting arms What Have I to dread What Have I to fear Leaning on the everlasting arms, I have 
blessed peace when my Lord so near when I'm leaning on the everlasting arms that I'm leaning on oh. oh. say friends to go come on Somebody lift your hand and say, Lead. Leaning on the everlasting. Everybody declare, I'm leading. Yeah. I'm safe and secure from. Same one time. Oh, lean. You got to lean on him. Truth and content, just safe and secure. Everybody ought to leave Hang on Cast your kiss in him and leave on. Give him your all and leave on. Leaning on The everlasting Sting on. Hallelujah. I lean. I'm leaning. Oh, leaning. Safe and secure. From alarms, I'm leaning, leaning on the everlasting Come on, give him praise. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There is power in your name. And when we lean on you, we know your strength will not fail us. You are the one that is keeping us. That gives us the power to overcome the wicked one. And to be declared victorious. Help us not to doubt that power. Not to limit what you can do in us and through us to take the measuring tape off and to embrace the fullness of what you can do in us when we truly yield our lives to you that's why Paul said I beseech you therefore brethren, by the mercies of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice holy and acceptable unto God which is your reasonable service and be not conformed to this world 
but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you'll prove that good and acceptable perfect will of God thank you Lord that we can through the grace you have given us walk in obedience before you and enjoy the benefits that you have provided for us in Christ for you said if any man be in Christ he's a new creation all things are passed away and behold all things have become new now let the words of our mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight may we agree with your word and cast down every thought every imagination that exalts itself against your knowledge bringing every thought to the obedience of Christ in the name of Jesus 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 right now subject every spirit to your authority Lord you are the father of all spirits in the name of Jesus glory to God let your glory be unveiled right now let your truth take residence in our heart and your spirit lead us into all truth and we will know the truth and the truth will set us free for who the son set free is free indeed we give it the praise and the glory in Jesus' name come on give him the praise right now Give him a glorious praise in the house. Praise the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. God is good. And all the time, God is good. And he expects that we as his children must also be good. So he said in Ephesians 5 verse 1, Be imitators of God as his dear children. Huh? Praise God. I hope that you embrace the word today. And as you do so and put the word in practice, you will see the life of the word being manifested in you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Time to release you. you may be seated for a while. We just release you to sow as the Lord has laid upon your heart. And we give the final word to those who are watching us online because we're a little bit over time. We got to run. Sorry for keeping you a little over the time, but try to over time. Started a little bit late today, but we'll still finish in good time. Praise God. Hallelujah. And all we said was needed to be said for your edification and for your profit in the Lord. Amen. Praise God. All right. Those who are watching online and watching Increasing Faith Deliverance Ministry International, we are 3 East Street, Montague, Jamaica. I'm Apostle Richard Fagan declaring the gospel of Christ and his kingdom. We wanted to know the truth. The whole truth and nobody truth. We're not sugarcoating the message to suit your fleshly behavior or your fleshly attitude or things that you want to hear. We are telling you just like the word said it. And we know those who truly hear the word just as it said it and obey the word will find the power, the life of the word being manifested in them. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. So we encourage you to grow in faith to grow in the power of the word hallelujah that the lord will bring you in the fullness of the life that he has for you in christ jesus and position you hallelujah to be one who will truly be heirs of his kingdom amen for it is the father's good pleasure to give to you the kingdom praise god and so those who want to know more about it you can check out our book the book out there we post it since here it's on amazon.com it's called the gospel of the kingdom the gospel that Jesus preached. You can order it on Amazon.com. Type in Richard V. Fagan and the book will pop up on Amazon.com in the search box. And you'll see the book. You can order it anywhere across the world. And of course, those who've been watching and who've been listening, have been here teaching more on it. 
You know that we have more teachings here than what is in the book because everything could not hold there, but we gave the foundational teachings and principles there for you to understand the gospel of the kingdom, the gospel that Jesus preached. Amen. Hallelujah. So you can check that book out and add it to your library to encourage your faith and increase your maturity in the knowledge of the Lord and in your fellowship and walk with him. We know it well if you truly mix it with faith and allow the Holy Spirit to lead you in what you read and receive through that book. Praise God. So we encourage you to do so. You can, of course, see more of the teachings of, um, of us on Facebook. Send a friend's request to Richard Fagan on Facebook. You'll be plugged into the live stream. We have five live stream services per week. That's Sunday morning, Tuesday in the days as this today. Praise God. Wednesday night, Friday night, Saturday morning, and Sunday morning. Yes, so five nights out of the week we have every night declaring gospel of the kingdom to you so you can get more from the teachings and of course there are other teachings we have here that are not recorded hallelujah but we have them unscripted form that can be posted to you for our daily bread as we're putting it together for that so persons can have it to read it daily and as a devotional to increase their faith in the lord amen so we encourage you to keep moving on in faith you can see more of the teachings on our youtube channel we added more scripture there for your studying and taking notes. We added some more scripture in the recorded format in YouTube channel. Subscribe to Richard B. Fagan on YouTube. You'll see the teachings there. And also you can look for our website. It's increasingfaithintl.org. That's the church's website. Increasingfaithintl.org. Those who desire to sow to the ministry can sow to the website. Or any other question, you can call me, Richard Fagan, at 876-839-9390, 876-557-2427. Looking forward to hear from you and to build your most holy faith in the Lord. God bless you. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his mind. Blessed today. Praise God. Good to be here with you and to share the word with you one more time. I hope that you really maximize, build on the word. Hallelujah, because the word of God says, anyone who hears these sayings of mine and does them is like to a wise man that built his house upon the rock and the winds and the winds and the rain beat upon that house, but that house stood and those who were in it were saved, but those who heard and did not do the word said they were likened to a foolish man that built his house upon the sand. Praise God. And it says, winds and waves and rain beat upon that house. But that house fell and great was the ruin and the destruction that followed. Come on. So we want you not just to be a hearer of the word, but a doer of the word. So we encourage you to get practicing the word in your life and see the power of the word manifest in your life. Amen. Lift those hands to the Lord. Father, we just thank you for every person who have joined us in this broadcast and really received the word today. We know you said when they mix it with faith, it will produce great harvest in their life because your word is endued with the power and your nature and your spirit within it. And that is not so much of us that speak, but of the word that we declare because not our word, but it's the word of God. And you match your word with substance, with power to back up what you said. And so those who hear and receive and do will see the power of God manifested. In their lives we thank you and give it a praise for that lord as you release healing and grace and favor over the person that whatever sickness disorder dysfunction in the body will be healed even now as they hear this word that faith will arise in their hearts and they will lay hold on the benefits that they have in the lord and healing is one of those benefits and we thank you and give it a praise for it as we give the glory in Jesus' name Come on, give him the praise right now. Give him the praise. Give him the praise. Hallelujah. Well, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord have up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. God bless you. Have a great day in the Lord. Bless you all.